back on track for the chemical industry, especially specialty chemical versus generic chemicals. What's the way forward? Ajay Joshi, chemical industry veteran, joins us now. Ajay, good morning. Thank you for joining us. What to your mind are the big trends for Indian chemical manufacturing sector for 12 to 18 months? Uh, good morning and firstly a very happy new year uh, talking about indian chemical industry this year uh, agrochemicals will continue to face subdued demand right now we are in the rabi crop season and already the wheat sowing is down one percent oil seed sowing is down seven percent pulses sowing is down five percent now 30 to 35 percent of agrochemicals in india are consumed during the uh, rabi crop season and already we are facing the downturn Furthermore, the Latin American market, which is the number one export market for Indian agrochemical companies, there also is a slowdown. On the other side, in the US market also, there is inventory slowdown. So for agrochemicals, this year will remain similar to last year also, the next eight to 10 months. Only towards the end of this calendar year, we will see some recovery. Other segments of Indian chemical industry will continue to face price and margin pressure from China. Uh, just like you talked about that earlier, it used to be China plus one. Now it is China 2.0, China's return. Just last calendar year, Jan to December 2023, 80 million metric tons of new chemical capacities, including agrochemicals, were added into China. Uh, now China is the is having the largest acetic acid capacity. 60% of global acetic acid capacities are in China. For terephthalic acid, they are now number one. From net importer in 2019, in China in 2023 became net exporter of terephthalic acid. So in solvent and commodity chemicals, Indian companies would continue to face pressure in terms of pricing, in terms of margins from Chinese chemical companies. The bright spot for Indian chemical segment would be battery chemicals, where the EV ecosystem is developing with newer investments from Tesla, Winfast, who are going to set up uh, EV plants in India. So companies planning to enter or already entering the EV battery chemicals space, whether it is graphite manufacturer, organometallic salt manufacturers, electrolyte manufacturers, or solvent manufacturers, they will see very, very good sales outlets domestically. Uh, so these are going to be some of the major trends. So overall, the, the weaker demand cycle, whether it is domestic or global, has not turned around yet. Uh, the pressure is going to remain from China. Uh, but this quarter, specifically towards the first week of February, China will go for their lunar new year. So we will see slight increase in certain commodities like caustic soda, acetic acid, phenol, caprolactam, monoethylene glycol. But again, once China resumes towards mid of February, uh, the prices will again go back to downward side. But the lunar year happens every year, Ajay ji. Why will it have an impact this year? Because, I mean, it's, it's, it's like Diwali happens every year. Yes. So this year, the reason is that the demand already, domestic China demand is anyway weak. Uh, that is one number one thing. Second thing is that India also demand is very, very weak. China exports to Latin America are competing with Indian exporters. So these are some of the reasons that, you know, this, this trend will, will take place. Ajay, I wanted to get a sense from you. One of the recent up-and-coming trends have been battery chemicals. And that's one space that the Indian companies are looking at uh, garnering more market share of. Which are the companies you think have a right to win in this space? Uh, so, in battery chemicals, in the electrolyte and solvent space, which is the hot cake right now, uh, Aether Industries, Amy Organics, Tatwa Chintan, these are some of the companies. In fact, Aether Industries, uh, they also happened to sign an MOU with the leading EV company for multi-year supply contract of electrolyte. Apart from that, Amy Organics, Tatwa Chintan, they are also entering the electrolyte solvent space for the battery chemicals. Earlier in India, the demand outlets were not present, uh, similar to China. But now with, like I said, the EV companies investing into capacities in India, the demand outlets will open up. So companies operating in this space will have a very, very demand turn. On the other side, for graphite manufacturers who would supply to the anode part of the batteries, companies like Himadri, Philips Carbon Black, they will also see very, very strong demand. Agrochemicals, because that has been a bit of a worry that, uh, you know, with respect to the access inventory, uh, demand as well has been a little bit subdued. Just want to know the road ahead in, t so in terms of some of these concerns, what it brings forth. 
Uh, so for India, 55 to 60 percent of agrochemicals export happen to Latin American and US market. Latin American demand is very, very slow. Plus, we are competing with a lot of Chinese suppliers there. In US market, on the other side, right now, the inventory, the day's inventory outstanding value for agrochemicals at the stockist is around 70 to 80 days compared to the average of 45 to 50 days. So even the US market is facing a slowdown. So the orders will be pushed forward for a lot of Indian agrochemical exporters. On the other side, the capacity additions in China, particularly, you know, pyroxysulfone alone, the demand for this molecule is around 3,800 metric tons. On the other side, China added two new capacities, adding to 4,000 metric tons per annum for pyroxysulfone alone. Similar new capacities have been added for 2,4-D, glufosinate, metconazole, and so many other products. So Indian players would continue to face fierce competition from Chinese, even in the export markets, while the domestic demand, like I said, is already taking a slowdown. Uh, let me ask a question. We are a financial channel. People want to hear and connect the dots here. If you are an investor, would you buy chemical stocks? If yes, which are the ones you'll buy? Purely based on, not the price, purely based on the earnings, where you think they're headed. Uh, right now, some of the companies uh, where if, from the investor point of view, we need to look forward that what is the order book plus what are the growth segment. Agrochemicals definitely is not a segment to enter into right now because for next eight to 12 months also, they are not be, there will not be any turnaround. But companies active in specialty chemicals space and contract manufacturing space where we have visible order book like Anupam Rasayan, RT Industries, Aether Industries, these are some of the companies where investors should look forward to in terms of buying. Okay. Um, where do you think Europe will be? Because, you know, the Basavs and perhaps the bears of the world, they do have a huge advantage of manufacturing and technology because of their headquarters based out of Europe. Could that be a deciding factor for agrochemicals? Uh, for agrochemicals, in particularly, if you look at Basavs of the world, they already are doing asset transfer to China. Now, BSF Agrochemicals also will be carved out as a separate entity in India also. That means that in India also, BSF Agrochemicals will have newer investment because it will have autonomy to operate. Europe will not play a major factor in 2024 because they already are struggling with higher production costs because of the Russia-Ukraine situation. Uh, so they are doing asset transfer to China. They are setting up base, big scale plants in China. If I talk about BSF, Clary and Prodas of the world, all the European majors. So from Europe side, you know, uh, even the domestic demand is also uh, going to remain weak and the chemical output is also going to remain flattish. Let you go. Uh, which is the other up and coming space, Ajay, that you would want to watch out for that? You know, apart from the battery, uh, you know, subset that we discussed, whether oleo chemicals, whether the other, you know, subsets, uh, what looks interesting as a theme now? Of fluoropolymers. Companies like Anupam Prasayan, uh, Naveen Florine, GFL, these companies are going to have a party because Japan and Korea, they are looking at India only as a supply partner, not China, uh, because of their trade issues and other geopolitical issues. In fact, Anupam Prasayan, although it was a late entrant into fluoropolymers business, it is getting huge MOUs and forward contracts. Similarly, Naveen Florin is also working on newer molecules for lithium and battery casing, which requires fluoropolymers. Now, these are very high margin, high value niche applications. So, fluoropolymers is going to remain another space to look forward to. Not we let you go. Appreciate you making time and speaking with us and decoding all that is happening in the chemical sector. Not the easiest of the subjects to understand, but thanks so much for candidly speaking about that. But time